thing. I want to share with you this morning why I do what I do. Why I'm going through my schooling to be up here and to be speaking to congregations just like you. And I want to share what my hope is for you, what my hope to do for you. Every time I get up here to speak to you, all I ever want is for you to catch a glimpse, just a glimpse of the love of God, just a taste of the mystery and the wonder, just a pinprick of light, just to help you see a little bit. In your life, you may have had many glimpses, maybe even enough to get a pretty good picture. Maybe a glimpse is all you've ever had. If I can give you just one more glimpse, I will be eternally grateful. It doesn't sound like much, but a glimpse may be all you need. Over the last couple of times I've been here, we've spent some time talking about our roots, sitting in our roots, feeling them out again, resting on them a while, seeing how far they stretch, We've tried to pay attention to how those roots nourish us and fill us with what we need. And beyond that, we've tried to pay attention to how those roots don't just give us, us our nourishment, but also give us what we need to nourish others. I've built up this image for a reason. Because now, we get to talk about the part that is always on our mind, expanding our ministry. We're at that important point where we need to grow up and out and start nourishing. Seems easy enough, right? So, LPCC... How will you reach out and nourish? Now, I know that all of you keen LPCCers are already having your mind flood with super cool and grand ideas. And that is wonderful. But I offer you these words of wisdom from our own Elizabeth Elliot, as she used to say to me, Slow down. Remember what we've talked about. Remember that a garden takes time and patience. Just like no miracle grow will get you that melon any faster than the ground is willing to give it to you, no one grand idea will do all the work of joining people to the church or to God. The work of ministry takes time and patience. And it needs everyone here to be involved all the time. This is why I chose this passage for my third message here. This morning's reading is about the gifts that God has given each of us and what they empower each of us to do. 
Paul says that according to Christ's gift to us, his life, we have each received a piece of that ultimately loving gesture. And it shines in us and around us and through us. He says these gifts will make some apostles, others teachers or prophets or pastors, and that all of us will be equipped for ministry to build up the body of Christ. Yes, each one of us in ministry. And each one of us working to build up the body of Christ. It's like I can hear the volunteer fatigue already. It's okay. This work isn't about art shows, or Christmas bazaars, or jazz Sundays, or lunches. It's not about volunteer hours. Although all of those things are great, and we love when we have our volunteers come in and give their time and talents to the different things that this church offers. All of them are so wonderful. But the ministry that Paul is talking about is not actually those events, those big gatherings. It's the ministry of every day, it's the ministry of our lives. Each one of us is called, he says, not only called to God, but called by God to be a part of God's ministry, to build up Christ's body, the church. I think we all know that this is no simple task. LPCC is in a time of great change and upheaval. You're going through significant leadership change in ministry and music, plus the pandemic, and needing to deal with all this new technological stuff and everybody getting online. It's a lot. And I worry about you. I worry about all of you and the grief that all this change and upheaval can cause. You're going to be working so hard this year just to keep things going for a while. It's just like when you lose a family member and then you have to relearn how to do Christmas and family dinners and get-togethers. It's the same in a church family. Nothing is going to feel the same this year. And there's no amount of pomp and circumstance that you can add on top of it to distract from what is no longer there. So is it really fair to ask of you right now that you also push to build up the body of Christ? Maybe, as long as that means building up your own selves, your own body, taking care of your own spiritual needs in this congregation and caring for each other as you need to here. But I know you. I know you are all still eager to build up our body to invite more people into this wonderful faith life that we have here. Well, I'd like to take you back to that image of a garden again for a moment. Let's talk about first fruits. 
We hear that a lot in the Bible, offering up our first fruits in honor of God. Jesus being representative of the first fruits of God's coming kingdom. First fruits. That's a really important image. But let's think about what first fruits actually look like. I think we're tempted when we hear about that in the Bible to think of the great bountiful harvest being offered up to God. But think about planting a tomato plant and then eagerly watching it grow, it sprouts, it starts to get bigger, and then those tiny little baubles start to form, and they're green, and you get more and more of them, and they slowly, slowly start to turn. You see the tinge of yellow and red come into them, And then one by one, one of them gets quite red, while the rest are still getting there. And you eagerly wait for that one super ripe, beautiful red tomato to pluck off and eat for the first time. That is your first fruit. This one red cherry tomato. Finally, it turns red, a deep, beautiful red, and you pluck it off, pop it in your mouth. And for the first time in that spring summer season, you get to taste that explosion of flavor that used to be that tiny little sprout. The first fruits are not really the banquet that we imagine. They're small in number and are just a taste of what's to come. But according to God, those are the choicest fruits. I tell this to you to encourage you not to concentrate on providing the banquet. God will do that. Instead, concentrate on just that first fruit, the green leaf that fills you with hope and anticipation, or the first ripe berry that doesn't fill the belly, but excites the mouth. You don't actually have to fill people with God's love. God will do that. Concentrate on sharing a glimpse, a taste of that love, of that deep truth of God's love. Spark the first taste that will lead someone to God's banquet. A glimpse is all we can hope to give. God's love is so immense. A glimpse is enough. If you catch one, treasure it. Contemplate it. Search it. And then let that glimpse shine through you. Maybe you can share that glimpse with someone else. Our ministry cannot mainly be 
big, grand events or projects. It has those, and they're wonderful. They're a celebration of what we have. But our ministry, the gifts that God has given to each of us, is in the relationships we keep between each other here and between us and the people of the world. Share your glimpse and pray that those around you may be able to catch a glimpse too. That glimpse is special. It's personal. And it is a pathway. You don't have to lead. God will do that. But if you can offer a glimpse, you can help walk someone beside you. Amen.